Most tractors don't have a birthday party, let alone a parade that brings a city centre to a standstill. If you ask me what the beating mechanical heart of Coventry, the Motor City, really is, it is not a flashy Jaguar, it's not some 4x4, it is this, the Ferguson TE20, the little grey Fergie. This huge event in the heart of Coventry is to mark a pretty big birthday milestone, although you might not even notice the small grey tractor who's actually the star of the show. It's all about wishing that the little grey Fergie, the TE20, a very happy 70th birthday, because back in July 1946, she rolled off the production line for the first time at Banalane in Coventry and clearly revolutionised farming as we know it today. There are 70 tractors here, one for every year since the TE20 went into production, and there are a lot of Fergie fans here too. It's lovely to see them. It really is. Yeah, it brings memories back. In the mid uh, 40s, 78% of all the tractors sold in Great Britain was Ferguson, 78%. Everyone here today has a Ferguson story to tell and they all start with the TE20. It's the tractor that Edmund Hillary took to the South Pole. It's a collectible. It's the star of its own children's TV show and it even has its own theme park ride in Norway. Given the legacy of the TE20, the people who built it, the people of Coventry, have a lot to be proud of. This really is the tractor that changed the world. 70 years ago, the first TE20 rolled off the Banner Lane production line in Coventry, the brainchild of Harry Ferguson. This rare footage shows him actually on the production line in the Coventry factory. Before the TE20, tractors were big, lumbering things with a good chance of injuring or even killing the farmers driving them. Ferguson Films, from the time, explained the problem. They replaced the horse with the tractor, hitched up the new plough and dragged it along behind. Little did they guess what snags they'd run into. Pretty lethal snags, it turns out. Any obstruction in the ground, or even just a patch of heavier soil, causes the front end of the tractor to rear up. So designers added more weight to keep the front down, but that caused the rear wheels to slip. So to stop that, the designers added bigger wheels. And so the rot set in. Harry Ferguson solved all this by adding this simple strut, a brilliant idea that redirected the same forces that made the front rear up, so instead everything stayed firmly on the ground. The end result was a tractor that was smaller and lighter than any other tractor being made by other companies at the time. But it could do just as much, if not more. And of course, the big advantage for the driver was the T20 was not going to rear up like an angry horse and try and kill you all the time. The TE20 is just so much fun to drive and this beautiful collection of lovingly restored Fergies lives just outside Rugby. Show us yeah, yeah. the all-important linkage. Yes, the all-important bit. The three-point linkage. One, two, three. Today, modern tractors still use exactly the same idea, but that linkage is just the pinnacle of a mountain of amazing engineering packed into every little grey Fergie. Oh, it is lovely. But I'm just a Johnny-come-lately Fergie fan compared to Peter. He remembers them from his school days. When I was a, at school in, in Coventry, we used to see the tractors going past the, 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 the school between Banner Lane Factory and Cowden Railway Goods Yard, which is where they were exported to all over the world. And he's been a Fergie fan ever since. Seven. In fact, you'll find Fergie fans and surprising bits of Fergie history all over the Warwickshire countryside, like the nine-year-old boy who saved the little grey Fergie from industrial espionage. I'll tell you a story where I'm lucky to be alive. Experimental TE20s were tried out in secret on farms all over Warwickshire, and one Fergie with a new engine ended up on this farm near Leamington Spa. But the farmer was pretty pally with the local Ford tractor dealer, and late one night invited him over to check out the competition, much to the shock of the youngest member of the family. Well, I felt terrible about it because I'd heard him say to the Fergie people, that tractor will be safe, nobody will see it, don't worry about it. 
and then as soon as they've gone, he has a load of his Ford friends down here and they go and they're going to get it out and have a bit of a drive on it. So nine-year-old Derek nicked the keys to the secret Fergie and legged it. I ran for all I was worth to that wood and I was laying in the ditch. I could see my father ranting and raving about in the yard and uh, I think if he'd have found me I'd have had the biggest shaking i would ever had. <laughs> Saved from the prying eyes of rivals, the little grey Fergie went from strength to strength and the TE20 was followed by new models built in the same factory, safeguarding thousands of jobs. And this is the site of the former Ferguson factory at Banner Lane in Coventry. So 70 years ago, the TE20, the little grey Fergie, was being built and then on Christmas Eve 2002, the factory here closed its doors for the very last time. And now, well, as you can see, it's a housing estate. Here, the Massey Ferguson tractor factory in Coventry is to close with the loss of a thousand jobs. Now, as they switch tractor production to France, they say it's become too expensive to manufacture here. They're not very happy, not very happy at all. This is Kathleen Davis. 14 years ago, she talked to the BBC when the factory closure was announced. And today, we've brought her back here. Well, you can hardly believe it was a factory now, looking round, but I mean, I know it was because I worked there for so many years, you know. Kathleen worked for 30 years as a cleaner at the Ferguson factory. So well looked after, there was a bank and everything at one time. It was like coming home here, you didn't want to go home. I had to clean all the lockers out. They, they left their lockers full of cups and mugs and sugar and coffee and everything and they took those lockers to France to the factory in Beauvais. Oh where they now make where them? They made, where they, some of the men went. Mm. But the tractors they made here, the ones that came after the little grey Fergie, well they're still working hard in the fields, not just here but all over the world. A tractor sale outside Ely in Cambridgeshire. And despite it being a long time since I was a small boy, I can tell you the green dots are John Deere, the odd blue one will be a Ford tractor, and the huge number of red dots in the middle, well, they're Massey Ferguson's. And they're not the ones built in France either. These were built in Coventry. We sell the Ferguson TE20s, which are sort of late 40s, 50, uh, sort of 50s in that area there. But principally what we sell here would be sort of 60s to 80s. These tractors are the direct descendants of the Little Grey Fergie. Just like it, they were built at Banner Lane, sold overseas, often to Ireland or Europe, and now they're back in this country, ready to be sold again. I hate to be rude, but they look really knackered, some of them. <laughs> well, we call it X-Farm, uh, <laughs> but they can look a bit moth-eaten, but, you know, hopefully, mechanically, they're, they're good, sort of thing. Yeah. Now, many of the buyers today are from the Sudan. Hamza has bought over 150 Ferguson tractors here over the years. Why do people like them? Because uh, they use it for a really long, long, long time. You can, it can work like 24 hours in one go. That's true, apparently. In the Sudan, tractor drivers do 24-hour shifts. One sleeps while the other drives, and then they swap over. And the Massey Ferguson just keeps going. They are reliable. And you see it, guys, here. It's very old, but it's still, when we take it there, refurbish it. And it's still, if you see the job they do, I don't think the person who made it will believe it. The fact these Coventry-built tractors are still working, and working hard, well, it's a tribute to the craftsmanship and the engineering that went into them. No wonder they inspire so much passion, and you can trace everything right back to the little grey Fergie. There's no doubt that the closure of the factory in Banner Lane was a terrible day for motoring in Coventry. But the people who worked there weren't just building tractors. Look around you. They were building a legacy, a legacy that's been exported all over the world. And every Ferguson, all those patches of red, well, they owe everything to the little grey tractor that started it all.